What's going on guys? No intro today, but before we get started with today's installment of the Slow News Day, I want to quickly thank all of you guys for finally surpassing 60 subscribers. We're on the road to 100 subs, and I just briefly wanted to thank all of you guys for your continued support, and uh, yeah, thank you. All right, uh, with the first story, I want to briefly talk about, or not briefly, but I want to talk about a uh, some competition in the football gaming market. Uh, as most of us know, Madden is the head honcho in that uh, space. There's not much competition, if any, and it seems to be that there's a game that is trying to go against that status quo. This pretty small gaming studio called Refactor Games is actually coming out with a game called Football Simulator, which is a basic enough name. By now, the game is actually in early access and is available on Steam, I believe, for about 20 bucks. And this game is actually pretty interesting. It differs from Madden in quite a few ways. For one, Madden is a more animation-based game in that a lot of it's like scripted events. So if you tackle somebody, that's a tackle animation where the two players or three players or however many players are locked into that animation. There's not that many outside forces that can interrupt that animation or alter it in any way. But with the football simulator game, it's more physical physics based. So for example, think of a game like GTA 4, which uses the Euphoria engine. Almost all the animations in that game use a, like a physics system where you'll never really get the same animation twice. So with the football simulator game, every tackle is different, every catch is different, every throw is different. So it makes everything look a bit more organic. Now I'm sure you're seeing clips of the game now, and it does look a bit uh, rough around the edges, but honestly, they're a small studio. They're probably, I don't need, I, th I saw a picture of them. It's probably like 20 people or so but they're a small studio and this is their first game another thing that actually separates them from ea and madden is that rather than releasing like a yearly version of the game that's 60 dollars, they're releasing a single version of the game and having a pretty robust customization suite to allow the player base to customize each team to their liking you can change anything from the team's name all the way to the stadium i haven't tested any of this out yet but i do plan on doing it and since the game is only 20 bucks, it's honestly not that um, bad of an investment, I'd say. So, and the money goes to a smaller development team to help bring competition to the market rather than putting $60 into a billion dollar company that has really uh, neglected their player base. I'm really looking forward to the game. I do hope it succeeds. I Football gaming and sports gaming in general needs competition in the market. Because if you look at games like Madden or any NHL game, all the like EA Sports games in like 2K, there's just no competition in any of those markets. And the games have had a steady decline of quality over the years. And it's really something that needs to change. All right, with the next story, we have a little bit of news on the side of YouTube Shorts, which is something that I am very interested in. There have been reports that YouTube is actually trying to experiment with ads in the YouTube Shorts platform. So obviously a lot of us are on TikTok or we look at Instagram Reels, but some of us might not know that YouTube Shorts are a thing and it's pretty much just YouTube's version uh, to TikTok. But unlike TikTok, where every few scrolls or whatever, you'll see a quick ad that you can just swipe through and it's nothing major. YouTube actually has no ads on that portion of the platform and it's just video after video after video. And obviously they, uh, are experimenting with ads because why not? It's a monetization opportunity for the platform and also it's a monetization opportunity for creators, which is a great thing. A lot of creators, myself included, use Instagram Reels, use TikTok and use uh, YouTube Shorts to try and reach new audiences. Obviously, we have longer form content for our subscribers, but short form content is extremely discoverable and that allows us to bring in a newer audience and the fact that there's a chance that we can monetize that sort of those sort of efforts in the future is something that I'm really looking forward to. Now, it's I think it's currently in like some sort of beta testing or whatever, and it's only available to a certain amount of creators. And I, obviously, I don't meet that criteria. But in the future, you know, I hope that uh, my channel is successful enough to where I can monetize not just the channel, but also the shorts. It was reported that YouTube is actually experimenting with this because as of this year alone, on a daily basis, YouTube Shorts is generating around 30 billion views. Fuck! Seriously? Like I said before, that's just a massive opportunity to earn more money for YouTube and for the creators. But yeah, the 
uh future of youtube shorts is really really bright and i'm looking forward to it uh the cpo of youtube even said there's uh future plans for monetization as far as youtube shorts allowing branded content direct shopping from the uh from the short itself and a whole host of other things so i'm looking forward to see what comes out of that all right with the final story today in case you guys haven't heard edp 445 is back on youtube yes the cupcake commander himself is back on the platform somehow and it actually seems like he's making videos as if he never left the platform or as if the last two years never even happened and for those of you that aren't aware of the whole edp 445 saga it was it may have been early last year or during the summer of 2020 i'm not too sure about that but there was an online sting operation by a youtube channel called cc unit where if you've ever watched shows like uh dateline nbc's to catch a predator with uh, chris hansen they they were doing a sting operation where they were just trying to catch people or adults interacting with people that were not adults just to keep it a uh, pg and um it actually turned out that edp was one of those individual individuals uh caught up in the sting operation and there was a video where they confronted edp and he was caught in the act of trying to meet up with uh uh, this underage person and just before I move on since it is a sting operation this underage person doesn't exist so there was no actual harm uh to an actual child thankfully the the entire video has EDP he's making up this dumb excuse where he's like oh I'm not meeting up with this kid I just came to pick up cupcakes and it's like yeah okay you you literally walked all the way to an apartment complex and the hope of playing bedroom twister with a child you know it's it was it was a dumb excuse and that's why i made the comment of calling him the cupcake uh, commander or whatever i said but i do want to state that i am um thankful of the efforts of cc unit and channels like theirs where they do these sting operations to expose people like this but with that being said a lot of the courses of action that they take are i don't want to say misguided but it's not quite the best way to go about doing things because a lot of the information that they gather and a lot of the stuff that they record can't actually be used in court to convict the people that are caught in the sting operation for fear of entrapment and then the uh people actually get off with like a lenient sentence or they get off completely in there and they uh, are completely acquitted of their alleged crime. Something that I would suggest that they do is you can do the sting operation, just don't do the confrontation. And I would take the information that you gather to the proper authorities and allow them to conduct an investigation based off of that. And I think you would get better results. I, I don't know if that's the case, but to me, that makes a bit more sense rather than doing what they're actually doing. But um, getting back to EDP, I doubt that he'll be on the platform for much longer. Ban evading is actually very, very uh, I don't. It's not illegal. It's not. It's not. It's not a crime. But it's it's against uh, YouTube's TOS, and they are very, very I guess diligent when it comes to getting people off the platform that are not supposed to be on the platform. And it's a, it's really a it's a big shame because I'll admit when I was a kid, probably like middle school or so, I used to watch EDP and I used to laugh. He used to be a very, very funny guy. But now that he has this sort of stink on him, you know, like this 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 aura about him where he's just not the same person that uh we all once perceived him as. It's just he's he's unwatchable at this point and i i i'm not really one to advocate advocate for uh kicking someone off of a platform but a, well, it, it, there's pretty much a lot of evidence but i still have to call it an allegation but assuming that the allegations of edp are true i do not think that he's the type of person that should be allowed to have a public platform all right, guys, that's about all I have for you guys today. If you guys enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.